We look really small. Compared to yeah, Robin. Yeah, we feel like they're like, really why far like forward. the biggest one of us? Like, <laughs> <laughs> She's a giant. Because you literally are, though. You are yeah. the biggest one. Yeah, but like, you're also, the tallest. like, you got the camera angles so that, like, I'm the closest. <laughs> hey, guys. Welcome to my channel. Today, we are collabing, as you can see, with some wonderful friends of mine. This is Chloe Rose Art. Hello. This is Super Ray Dizzle. Hi. And here we have Robin Sealark. So what we're going to do today is play Would You Rather, and it is going to be like some art edition. Um, can mm -hmm. I just clarify, I did not get tattoos. This is paint. They just painted me. I just want to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if you want to see us paint her, you should go over to her channel. I'll leave everybody's links below so you can check them out. Thanks. And it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the first question I have for you guys. Would you rather burn all the art you've ever made or be forced to steal a painting from a museum that's like really famous? Well, first of all, I want to burn my art anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> I'd probably burn all my art because I could always make new art. It, like, if I get arrested for stealing a famous painting, I'm never going to be able to make it again anyway. Unless I do like prison art supplies, which Ray taught people how yeah. to do. I don't really know how you knew how to do that. That was pretty creative. I would steal, cause some like, wow. like it's from a really mu famous museum. Yeah, okay. like the Louvre, something like so that. Ooh, the Louvre. You're probably getting like good a luck serious, luck. serious good luck. With no, I feel like felony. no, I definitely could do it. Like ew, I the can whole, do it. I can do it. <laughs> You could do it and get away with it, or you could do it like you'd be fine in prison. Because like sometimes <laughs> those art museums, like in the bathroom, they have like lesser known art, but it's still in, in the, the build. Bathroom? Yes, they have what? like yes, like in the yeah. lobbies and in the bathrooms, they have like lesser known pieces there, and those are oh. the ones that I could just like pickpocket or like okay. a piece of a big painting or something. I bet I could do. I bet I could do it. I bet I could do it. I used to. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna spill the tea just yet. But oh. whenever I was a teenager, I was a little poor and I was a little rebellious. So she was stealing all the corners of the <laughs> oh, so the world. <laughs> I would probably burn mine because I feel like I would have a clean slate to start over and I could come back and like do something really wild. <laughs> so I'd be down for that. I don't own most of my paintings anymore. Like I have very f I pretty much don't have paintings, so it's like my paintings are lost to me already. So is it like am yeah. I burning everyone else's paintings yeah. that I like send off? Burn it! Burn it to the ground. <laughs> Okay, the next one. Would you rather only draw with your mouth for the rest of your life or with your feet? First of all, for sure. I could make a lot of money using make, making videos with my feet. <laughs> so, yeah. There's a lot of creeps out there. I'm just trying to think where I'm most dexterous. <laughs> <laughs> I think the control might be better with my toes. But also, I feel like this hurts a lot more than the mouth. Yeah. Probably toes. Actually, no, you know what? I'm trying to think. Artists that I've seen, because that, that happens, like, sometimes there's artists who don't have arms. I feel like generally they yeah, do paint yeah. with their mouths. Yeah. They're feet. really amazing. Yeah. So I'm going to say mouths. I'd say mouth. Yeah, definitely mouth. I'd say feet. Well, if it's like, like if I'm gonna be doing YouTube, then feet. But if it's gonna be like videos in general, is gonna be feet. But if it's gonna be like anything else, then yeah, I guess mouth too. It's more yeah, practical. Yeah, because you you can like I feel like you've got more like control. What is that? that? What? <laughs> what an interesting. Well, like group. you eat every single day, so you've got like a lot of like. Mm, like I can do that. Well, we all know how Chloe eats. Well, well, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like you got more control with your mouth. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just wanted to know if any of you guys have ever eaten an art supply other than paint water. Mm. Ever. I sometimes, like, if I'm being lazy and, and <laughs> don't, oh, like, no. okay, oh, sometimes no. I'll oh, start. Wow. I, 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 I no, uh -oh. like, sometimes, wow. okay, I don't know when exactly. I, I think if I've, like, poured out my paint water and then I, like, come back and I'm like, ah, oh, like, that one little thing I need to fix, instead of getting water, I, like, sometimes I'll, I'll put my, like, acrylic paint in my mouth and, like, clean up my paintbrush. <laughs> Bro, what? Oh, my oh, God. God. I like to rob in all the paint. Uh, like, yeah, no, I could not. I could yeah, it's no, very no. minuscule. I swear I'm not just like eating yeah, paint. Like, <laughs> like, like, like no, pounding a little paint. Like, no. No, it's, it's not like that. They, 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 it's they, just like, you know, you like wipe off the brush and like you. Anyway, I'm not making it sound better. They said that like Van Gogh <laughs> did that and that's like what made him crazy. I don't know if that's true or not. I, don't know. I like, I suck on my pens when they don't work. And once I did that, and it exploded in my mouth. Oh, wow. Yeah, so my mouth was <laughs> completely Whoa. black. 
I've also eaten my share of crayons as a kid. Yeah. So <laughs> I so good. don't think that I've ever had like ingested any form of art supply. I do on accident, whenever I'm filming my videos, like, I'll have to, like, open something up, like, with yeah. my teeth, because I'm, like, a barbarian, apparently. <laughs> because and I'm a so, barbarian. <laughs> like, gets all up in there. Because I'm a barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather draw in one style for the rest of your life, or one medium for the rest of your life? Medium. Medium. Medium, yeah. Medium. What would your guys' mediums be? Digital art. Gouache. Paint. Oil paint. I'm between oil and acrylic. I, ooh, I don't know how to answer that one, man. It's a tough question. It's, it's oil or acrylic, one of those ones. Would you rather use your favorite color, just your favorite color, so one color for the rest of your life, or three to five of your least favorite, most clashy colors ever for the rest of your life and all your paintings? I would do that one. Yeah? Well, because you, if you have three to five, you can make a lot more color combinations, you have a lot more mm -hmm. play, even if they're clashy. If you're doing it mm -hmm. for years and years, you're gonna master the art of that clash, yeah. and it's mm -hmm. gonna be so, like, a style, and it's gonna be notable. You yeah. can really work it to your favor. Versus, I mean, you could do the same with monochromatic, like, a monochromatic painting, but I just yeah. feel like I have more play with multiple colors, you know? Yeah, same. Yeah. I would definitely do the clashing colors, because I feel like I would be limiting myself to learning color theory later and like not improving in certain aspects of my art journey. Yeah, I'd probably go with clashing colors too, honestly. I think you, then it would be like your style, like the ugly color person. You know, the person that does the ugly colored paintings, but they're still good paintings, but they're like ugly colors put together, yeah. <laughs> oh, I agree with everybody else, so okay. that's my answer, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> would you rather get all your art supplies from like the dollar store for the rest of your life or completely make your art supplies from scratch? Mm. Dollar store. Mm. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would say dollar store too. Making paintbrushes, that seems hard. I might make I would just I paint I would with my own. hair and never make yeah, any. Like, I, I would make drink, my hat you cut it. your hair out and then, ooh, paintbrush. Well, I like, make my own because like, I, I, like I, I know people who make their own supplies and like I feel like at a certain point I would just feel so frustrated by the limitations yeah. of what's available to me. I would just be mad that I wasn't making yeah. my own instead. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like in Japan, for example, Copics are really cheap there. They're like considered like a lower end, like in price. So I feel like that would, so if I was to like be able to travel to Japan and just get like a bunch of Copics for really cheap, in different parts of the world, you know, they have different, they have more access to certain colors. And I just, I feel like, like, are you talking just like strictly dollar store or like cheap stuff? Like dollar store. Like American dollar stores kind of? Or mm -hmm. like, okay, because like if, if we're talking like worldwide, then I would do it. But if we're talking just like American dollar general, dollar tree stuff, then yeah, I would make my own. This isn't like a would you rather, but this is a legitimate question. I want you to soul search on it. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um, my, my, my question is, if you could never share your artwork, no one ever was able to see it. It was completely just something that was personal and like, like almost secret. Mm -hmm. Do you think you would still make artwork? Yeah. And, but like, if you mm -hmm. did, like, if you did, in a, like, in a highly, like, self-analytical way, do you think it would affect the way you made artwork or frequency? What effect do you think it would have on that? Well, I used to make art every so often. I'm, I'm talking like maybe once every three-ish months. Mm -hmm. Just because I enjoyed it, it was good stress relief. I had like 30 Instagram followers for a long time. So I know I'm seeing my work and I wasn't really making it for anyone but myself. I just enjoyed it. So debilitating as it is to not have people sort of see it and appreciate your hard work. So it's like if, you if you're just making it in a vacuum, you know? Yeah. So if you had like no, absolutely no way or opportunity of getting anywhere with your art, is that what you mean? No, I just mean like you you can't show it to anyone. Yeah. Like it's, a, even like there's family. some kind of physical impossibility. Like uh -huh. no, no one even knows you make artwork. It's completely just you. I think if I did that, I would do a lot bigger of pieces because I'd have more time, but my style would probably get a little darker because mm -hmm, the stuff I paint on camera is very cheery, mm -hmm. but you know, I do have my dark moments and I, I do some crazy stuff off camera, so I'd probably 
Yeah, I agree 100%. I would get like really dark with it and nothing would be off limits because it's just me and my own yeah, self, you know? Yeah. So I feel like I could get like do some really crazy. And like you said, I wouldn't, I would have unlimited time to do certain pieces. So yeah, I definitely would make it. And I feel like I'd get like into the deep, dark corners of my mind. Yeah. I'm just like so You curious. could like rage paint, like swipe yeah. that, that yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, and it yeah. doesn't have to be good. There'd be you no know? expectations. That was, yeah. That's what I think I'd appreciate. It. One style I do a lot, which is the one that I'm best at and the one that connects people to me the most is realism because like your average everyday person you know they see realism and they oh that's so cool that somebody can do that with like a pen and a piece of paper so I think like I would get really experimental with it because I wouldn't have to want to have to make a connection with anybody and I wouldn't have to like not have to but I wouldn't need to I guess I don't want I don't want I don't want to say I have to but I feel like that's what I would do I'd get really weird with it all and I would like you said there's no expectation so yeah that makes me think of a question that you're answering that I'm kind of curious to extend back to you guys too then if you didn't you could still share things but if you didn't have yeah. to think about external validation or career things or how it impacts like the audience if you felt full freedom to just make mm -hmm. exactly what you felt like in any given moment mm -hmm. what would be the difference between what you're making now like I guess maybe you kind of answered that you would go more emotional you think yeah and a and lot darker. bigger and bigger yeah because I feel very restricted for time when like mm -hmm. I'm making stuff for YouTube or like showing it to people or like getting mm -hmm. a project for somebody done but if it's just by yourself, then I usually just stay up till the wee hours of night and yeah, definitely. It's yeah, a great same time. here. Yeah. When's the last time you guys just made a piece for yourself? Um, I this is kind of private. I haven't shared it with anybody except for I think you, my boyfriend, and that's it. Um, but recently, I've been getting back into oil painting, and I have I've been doing a portrait of myself actually, and I haven't showed anybody or you know anything. Everybody knows about it now because I just said it, but no one's seen it, and it's really nice. It's been really freeing, and it's been really nice to like get back on the oil painting scenes. I'm working on one, um, like a, it's like a Disney one. Surprise, surprise. That I'm, I haven't been filming at all. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of a practice it's with acrylics because I really like acrylics. I've got some like Liquitex heavy body acrylics. So I was like, I'm trying to be professional. Yeah. I, I've been enjoying doing it. Would you rather give up your art YouTube channel forever or just art in general, but still keep your YouTube channel, but it's about something else and you're still making, say, the same money? I would give up mm. YouTube in all forms in a heartbeat for art. Like I started YouTube because I wanted to be an artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would feel wrong, like, doing YouTube without doing, like, what my heart is really into, so I would have to pick art, I think. I would pick YouTube because, for me, that's, like, a form of creativity is mm -hmm. to be able to edit and, like, connect with people and, like, and that's a, making the thumbnails, like, graphic design. So, for me, it's, like, an outlet to be creative. I would pick YouTube. And plus, like, you guys are, like, you know, my <laughs> literal life, you know? I don't know. I feel like it's tough because I do love YouTube and I didn't initially start YouTube to do art on it and I feel like my channel's more entertainment for art as opposed to just me making art all the time. I would miss YouTube, but then I'd miss art as well. You said you could keep doing art. It's just yeah. you couldn't have an art-based yeah. YouTube channel. No, I don't think I could Oh, you could keep it. doing art still? Isn't that what you said? You could keep doing art still, but you'd have to get rid of your YouTube channel. Oh, okay. But you could have like a YouTube channel about something else. Mm -hmm. So I'd gotcha. probably maybe do that to still have YouTube, to still yeah. have people to connect to, because I've never sort of had that before YouTube. Like I met all of these because of YouTube. I wouldn't want that to go away. So I'd probably keep YouTube and just keep doing art personally behind the scenes. Yeah, that's a good, yeah, that's probably yeah. my answer too. Yeah. Well, if I could do art behind the scenes, mm -hmm. then my answer would change. <laughs> Okay, I have a question. Yeah. Would you rather... Wait, what was my question? I forget it. Oh, would you rather paint the same thing over and over or draw it for the rest of your life or only use your least favorite art supply? Least favorite art supply for the rest of my life because I feel like at some point I would get better at it. And I think the reason my least favorite art supply is like pastels is because I just, well, first I think that I just don't like them. But second of all, I think I don't have enough experience. I think if you have enough experience with something, I mean, you can still not like it, I suppose, but I, I, I would get really bored of drawing the same thing over and over again. Honestly, I would be really bored and I would give up. <laughs> like least favorite, just medium in general, not yeah. like least favorite like medium. cheap quality or something. For instance, medium. Chloe and I really hate oil pastel. Yeah, me too. I would definitely do my least favorite art supply because I think if I had to replicate like the same thing over and over, I just wouldn't do art anymore. Like after like five times, yeah. like why mm -hmm. keep yeah. doing it? To me, I would get bored. So many yeah. variations of his self-portraits. It's like it's the same thing over and over again, but there's 
that's kind of where I'm like not sure. I I feel like I'm different from every. All my <laughs> answers have been like opposite of everybody because I definitely would draw the same thing over and over again. I mm-hmm. love drawing human anatomy. Like if I could draw that in ever, if I could draw well, in skulls, the same position, like the same person, oh, the same pose, the same, like just stood same up lighting. Even, like, oh, do, like, okay. Station stylistically. Yeah, right. but skull. No, but like I mean, it's the same. Oh, the exact, no, the yeah. same. No, okay, that. yeah, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, you have much more range with the other ones. But I'm curious if you guys have any like memorable awkward moments associated with your YouTube. I have like a lot of cringe stuff. For example, and I I don't know. I'm trying to get this out there more. I did this really stupid trim trim art hack video, mm-hmm. and it did really well. It got like almost two million views. But I'm just embarrassed. I'm still embarrassed. <laughs> That's why I'm like I was trying, but no, I was. I was trying too hard. I was trying too hard to be funny. I felt like the way I was trying to get my point across about how Trim Trim can be really ridiculous with their stuff and how they promote sometimes dangerous things to kids, like mm-hmm. using tools like fires. And I felt like the way I did it came off very condescending. And so two million people saw that and I feel like that's not who I am. Mm-hmm. And so I honestly literally think about that video every single week and I think about taking it down like literally every single day. So that's my big one is it was it's cringe slash regret. Oh, that's I actually do kind of have one actually, it, and it's for a similar reason. That makes me think about it. I, it was when I back when I had a vlog channel. I don't anymore, but it was when I was first figuring out like the boundaries of how much you share online versus mm-hmm. don't. I just got too vulnerable and open. I, there's just like boundaries. I like I tend to err on the side of more open than what's like other people find socially normal <laughs> and, uh, like learning that balance was you know it was like hard pressed once the cringe sets in i mean it's good for lesson learning but when you just face the realization of coming across not how you want to publicly with people who don't know you i can share this now because it was a couple <coughs> years ago and i've since moved a couple times let's see it was back in 2016 I had a comment on my channel and this was really awkward for me because it it actually shook me up for about a straight month, but somebody asked me if I was on this certain street because they said that they saw me and it was the street that I lived on. So when I read that comment, I was like, uh, that's where my house is and I didn't know really what to do. So I just like freaked out and deleted the comment. I don't know. It was really awkward. So I was really careful about like sharing where I lived for a while. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm more comfortable telling people where I am in Ohio now, but not super specific. Like, yeah, that's scary. Yeah. yeah. That's really, you just creepy. don't know who's out there. Yeah. It's creepy. That's yeah. creepy, dude. Yeah. yeah. Luckily I live in the middle of nowhere. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think more, more than anything, I just feel like there's a lot of annoying moments. Mm. You know, like yourself, I did the Instagram art hacks, and that was my biggest video. It's like 1.9 million views, and maybe that'll happen again one day. Who knows? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Um, so many people, like you know, they they always like you didn't do it right. You didn't do it yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Actually, yeah. one thing that I notice is sometimes when I'm filming. I'm a little bit stressed out because I'm I'm going against the battery. I'm getting hot because of all the studio lights. I'll often not think of something really obvious. I can, I can, it seems like I'm stupid that I didn't think of that in that moment. Mm. Like I was using these crayons in, in a video and I was like, oh, they're kind of like if pastels had an oil base to them. <laughs> um, <laughs> like oil pastels are a thing yeah. <laughs> um, and I, come, I was like you, you get sort of stressed and you don't think in your right frame of mind so I yeah. sometimes I'll sort of not think and people like tell me easier ways I could have done things it's like why didn't you just do it that way and it's like oh, oh yeah I should have done it that yeah. way but you sort of don't think in your right frame of mind so that's yeah, you kind have like a it. million things running through your mind. Yeah. Like, is the sound quality okay? Can people yeah. see this? Is the lighting okay? Yeah. Especially when you have people that, are, you know, you have a lot of comments randomly. Like, sometimes it's fine. And sometimes I deliberately ask sort of silly questions that people will be like, well, yeah, duh. <laughs> because, you know, you get the interaction and people like to think they're right and all that stuff. But sometimes I genuinely do make stupid mistakes because I'm not in my right frame of mind. <laughs> or, um, there's like a, va- I'm like opening up <laughs> about like this dark stuff. There's like a lady screaming in the background with like a vacuum. <laughs> 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 <Have> the duster! <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. I do yeah. that too. I get like really nervous and there's so much else going on when I'm filming a yeah. video that I can't just tap out. I've, I've been trying to be more vulnerable and relaxed and you know i think it makes things less awkward when you just embrace your flaws in videos sometimes yeah. too because the more i feel defensive and embarrassed about them and stuff the more i feel like people actually call it out but if you embrace yeah. it a little bit i yeah. think 
It's just a little healthier. If you guys didn't have to worry about views going down, how would that change the way you're doing an art YouTube channel? Mm -hmm. I think I would probably incorporate more than just art into my channel. I yeah, do definitely. Like, like, silly stuff like I would cooking. do. I would do vlogs. Yeah, yeah. that'd be like, fun. Just, I've always I wanted to do a vlog. I would love to just sit and talk sometimes. And yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna make a video on that. And I'm like, yeah. It's it's not probably not gonna do that great. Yeah. And it's sad yeah. because you should be able to do stuff, but at the same time when it's your job, you kind of have to do things that yeah, that you're passionate about, but you also gotta understand that the people are watching and the people that are keeping you like employed. So you mm -hmm. need to have a balance of yeah, what you enjoy, but you also need to give the people what they want as well. So people that are like, Oh, I'm just gonna make content that I enjoy any you know, now is great, but you also need to remember where your audience came from and why they're there watching you. Mm -hmm. So when it is your job, it's not your hobby anymore. It's not just for fun. You know, I'm, I'm, there are millions of people out there that don't enjoy the jobs they're doing, but they do it anyway. So sometimes you have to make videos that maybe you don't enjoy as much, um, but just try and do it in a way that you'll maybe enjoy it more. That's something I've been thinking about, like with, with burnout. I'm as a viewer, you've probably heard multiple YouTubers talk about before the idea of burnout. It's just, it's a weird thing because you, a lot of people see this as a dream job, as the dream mm -hmm. job, and often I, that's how I see it. Mm -hmm. It's my dream job, and yet sometimes I structure it in such a way that I'm not enjoying it, mm. yeah. which really is like defeating the purpose <clears throat> of, of a dream this job career. Yeah. So yeah, so that's something I'm I'm trying to actively think about to like re and you know like make sure that I'm in, embedding joy into my yeah. videos and feeling like yeah. happy and inspired with the content yeah and I, a lot of um assumptions as you were talking about with the dream job thing is sometimes it doesn't actually feel like a dream when you're working like well over 40 hours a week I mean you wake up and the first thing you do is go mm -hmm. in your studio and you're trying to film and then you spend like a whole day editing and then before you know it sometimes you have like a 60 to 80 even more hour work week yeah, I do that quite often. Pretty much almost every single video, you know, it's just a, gr a three day process of waking up, putting on my makeup, getting ready, refilming, filming, thinking of an idea. Then after that, immediately start editing. And it's hard sometimes to like keep up with my real life, you know, like my friends, mm -hmm. family, go cook things, go clean things, go, cause like that's so minimal, go wash the car, you know, compared to yeah. getting a video out, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like constantly grinding, grinding, grinding. And yeah, it does take a lot out on me. I feel like like YouTube is hard mentally and mm -hmm. I said this to you the other day but I feel like I feel bad if I say oh it's difficult because you, I always think of like doctors and nurses that are out there like your husband's training to be a doctor I mean how much he's working on that and they're obviously all hours of the day saving people's lives they're doing this and that and I'm always like well I'm complaining about struggling to make a video but it's also relevant because mentally you're like working for yourself. I, I have trouble sometimes keeping myself like organized. And what's the one I'm going for here? Motivated? Motivated, yeah. I have trouble keeping myself motivated because I am working myself. You don't have co-workers or support. Like this, these are our co-workers. We don't see each other very often. You kind of got to know when to calm down a bit with it. But where our stress comes from mostly is when it's your job and not your hobby, you have to make content that people are going to want to watch. Mm -hmm. To, like it's not about views but on it, it is when you're earning money from it so you have to like maintain a certain standard and sometimes out of no fault of your own algorithms can change and then it can change how your videos are viewed and that's where our sort of stuff is stressful I often feel guilty about saying it's stressful because I think of all the people that are out there you know getting up super crazy early working like you know nurses are like 18 hour shifts but then it again it is relevant in a way that we have different stresses. I feel like people are like, well, it's easy because you just need yeah. you pick your know. problems. But it is, yeah. it is exactly. valid. It's how, you, it's how you take it and how you deal with it, which I think is what a lot of us struggle with because mm -hmm. yeah. we are by ourselves and. I mean, That's you have to do all from. that behind the scenes stuff. Like say you're a brand contacts you, mm -hmm. you're the one. Like if you have a manager, <laughs> they're going to do it for you. But if you don't have a manager, you're doing all the corresponding, you're signing contracts, reading them over, and then you're editing. You're writing scripts, if you write scripts, yeah. you're getting the ideas. And, and then you have the stress editing. looming over you, like, is this video even going yeah. to perform well? How Who is your favorite person here? <laughs> Lighthearted and happy. Me. If, it's not me, if it's not me, I'm not going to be a friend anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, How has YouTube changed your life positively? I've met the most incredible people and the friends that I've always wanted my whole life and now I have them and it could make me cry honestly oh, because I'm guys. so happy. I've had such an amazing <laughs> week with all of you and it's so nice to just have people know 
that not only have your same like hobby but have your same job have your same stresses and just understand and communicate and also have like great amazing personalities that we just all blend and mesh so well together yeah. it feels yeah. incredibly validating to meet people who like really understand what you do and we click with our hobbies and everything mm-hmm. and this has just been a really recharging time it has <laughs> is that so your good. answer as well then yeah, yeah definitely uh youtube has changed my life because meeting you guys i feel like before i, I had didn't really have a lot of friends and i felt like kind of a loser and like i used to make youtube videos and like my literal very first youtube video i was like no one's gonna watch this kind of thing to see the like amount of kind people the amount of art the people support. who love art mm-hmm. the support is just incredible Mm -hmm. you know meeting you guys it makes me feel good about myself it's literally changed my life so much for the better i'm a pretty shy person and so me too knowing that all these introverts are coming together it almost takes away that awkwardness and that tug to keep being shy these people just pulled me out of my shell it was really (laughs) nice you know and if i meet people in real life i'm usually that quiet person that would just sit and watch from a distance for a this really is, like, I, this has given me access to my, my dream has always been to be an artist. I don't think I ever had anything else in mind, and I, I sell my paintings. <laughs> like, I get to do that, and, like, and I'm involved with the community that, it's just, it's, it's getting to be part of something that is so core to my value system. That's just incredible. <laughs> I do love this job. It like obviously it's stressful. I I love this job though. Mm-hmm. I love I love yeah. the opportunities. The stress is worth it. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's every yeah every yeah every little drop of stress, sadness, like fear, any it's anything. The hate comments, anything is worth it. Just to- yeah. I mean that's why we ultimately we keep doing it because mm-hmm. it is worth it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. 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 You guys make it worth oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah you guys are wonderful. Yeah. You're so encouraging. All right, guys. That was our last question. Thank you for watching. Make sure you go subscribe to these guys <laughs> and just go watch their videos. I'll leave oh. their links below. But, yeah. This was really fun. It was fun. fun. Yeah, it was yeah, awesome. If you watch the end, you're proud. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for caring. <laughs> yeah, if you stayed this long, congratulations. Thank you for watching. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> right, bye, guys. Bye. bye.